is Saturday. Today is Saturday, September 30th, here in the Gold Coast of Queensland. It's Friday, the 29th of September in California. We had a big full moon yesterday. We are about to launch into our series on the life of Master Empty Cloud, Master Xu Yun. Um, his picture biography. So, if that is what you are here to be part of, welcome. Glad you are here. I want to express my gratitude to the translators and to the technicians who put this lecture series online. And I want to say, before we get started, in Chinese, 如果大家想听流利的普通话翻译, 我们有办法，你可以在那个Zoom这个软体的控制板的右下角找到interpretation，那里就有Chinese就可以听到中文。Also, Chinese uh, we have a fluent translation into the Vietnamese language. If you would like to listen to the words I am saying in English in Vietnamese, there is an opportunity to do so. Please go to the chat box and click on the link Vietnamese and you can hear Vietnamese translation. Furthermore, uh, if you would like to request Dharma as Elaine is just about to do, um, we would like to invite you to join in, <coughs> excuse me, join our group of Dharma requesters. There is a link right there in the chat box which will let you do that. Um, I'm going to step away and turn down some ambient noise, so don't go away. Be right back. Okay, that should be a little better. Alrighty, that gets us started now. Uh, as I mentioned, Elaine is going to do our Dharma request. First thing we have to do is ring the bell three times so that folks can bow to the Buddha. That's what I'm going to do and invite you to join me. So here we go. Let's bow to the Buddha three times. First bow. Second bow. And third bow. Now, uh, Elaine, if you would like to request Dharma, please do so now. Gong Ching Da De Shen Ting Wei Ci Fa Hui Ji Jie Zhong Shen Ching Zhuan Miao Fa Luan Jiao Da Wu Men Will the Sangha with great virtue, our compassion, for the sake of this assembly and all living beings, please turn the wonderful Dharma view to teach us how to live suffering and attempt bliss and end birth and death and quickly will lie number. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Homage to the Blessed Noble and Perfectly Enlightened One. Homage to the Blessed Noble and Perfectly Enlightened One. Namo Sadanto Suchedoye Allahdi Sammyao Samputoshe. Namo Sadanto Suchedoye Allahdi Sammyao Samputoshe. Wushang Shen Shen Wei Miao Fa Bai Qian Wan Jie Nan Zao Yu. Wojin 
supreme and wondrous dharma, subtle and profound, rarely is encountered even in billions of eons. But now we see and hear it and accept it reverently. May we truly understand the Buddha's actual meaning. All right. Thank you for the Dharma request. Elaine, appreciate that all the way from Texas. And we would like to respectfully acknowledge the Kumbumiri people of the Ugambi language region as traditional storytellers and custodians <coughs> of the land where our monastery is located. We pay respects. Oh, you know, there's a typo there. We pay our respects. Hold on here. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging, and all First Nations people whose sovereignty was never ceded. Woman Tunjing the Changren, Yo Gambe Uzuda, Kunbu Malia, Ren Shi Woman Suyan Su Zai Di, the Chuan Tong, Shi Su Shu Shuja, Her Shohu Ren, Woman Shang, Go Chu Shen Zai, Her Wei Lai, the Chang German, Chi Jing, Bing Che Shang, Soyo Su Wei, Fang Chi, Chu Chen, the Di Min Zu, the Yuan Zu Min, Chi Jing. Okay, that's very nice when it's well translated flows right along uh-huh there we go all the different places where we pay our respects here we go <whistles> bell sound wide resounds throughout a hundred million worlds the buddha's lie is heard and spread all throughout the triple world The wondrous sounds that everywhere Fill the Dharma realm with peace May those who hear it gain the strength To follow in faith the Buddha's path Chung Shang Chuan San Chen Jian Nei Fo Fa Yang Wan Yi Guo Zhong Gong Xun Qi Fa Jie He Ping Li Yi Bao Tano Hou De. All right. Well, hey. Um. Oh, yeah, that's right. Welcome to Master Empty Clouds Picture Biography. Here is our teacher. Now, last week, people will remember that. That's what. That we uh, last week was about reading and about books, and I was able to share my own personal history of being inspired by first of all the very first time in my young life that I had read anything that had to do with the Dharma came by finding a book on my father's bedside reading table that had Dharma in the title. It was Jack Kerouac's Dharma Bums, and I went on to read on the road after that another Kerouac book and found out more about the Diamond Sutra and the Heart Sutra and enlightenment and words like Satori and Kensho. Ah, it was an opening. It, it made a difference. This was clearly it was something breaking through the ordinary uh, television and sports based childhood that I had had to that point. Um, this was from another world, another older place, and it caught me. And it, those words are like seeds, truly like seeds in the ground, that when they, they're planted, they, uh, through some magical force, um, pulls from a seed, a sprout, and then a sturdy plant, and then leaves, and then blossoms, and then fruit, and then it recycles. So the very same way those words, the power words of the Buddha's experience uh, were enough. That was enough to help me wake up. And here's the story of Master Empty Cloud with the same experience. As a young man, we see his photo there, his, his painting. His <laughs> No, it's not. Not a photo. Not a painting. It's a, an etching or a woodblock. Probably an etching. Um, he is, there's this magic thing that happens. Can you all see the screen there? where between the eyes looking at the words on the page and 
the picture is happening in his mind. Uh huh. That is a magic moment. And as I've told the story before about the daughter of one of our close disciples, who was a very ordinary girl, interested in clothes and boy bands and being popular. And the last thing she wanted was to go become a student. And her parents, firmly but kindly, sent her off to our school at City of 10,000 Buddhas. And she came home. <coughs> she came home six months later. And she didn't have any magazine with her or a cell phone. What she had instead was a stack of four books that she was reading all at once, each one with a bookmark. And during the playtime at the monastery, she didn't want to play. She wanted to read. Oh, what a change. Her mind had opened and she was stuffing it full of knowledge. And her you could just see something had had come alive inside her mind and her heart. Her imagination is her literary imagination. So, as Shifu would often say, Jin Shirja Hong Jin Mi Jia Hei, he would say, whoever draws near red ink turns red. Whoever turns near black ink turns black. So, Shamaren Jiao Shamaren, people draw, people are drawn to their own kind. So, the importance of environment over the, the awakening of a mind. So that's, that was last week's story. What happens next? Our disciple, our young new Buddhist, uh, <laughs> was 13 years old. And here's his story. We can look at the picture first or read the text first. Let's read the text. Here it is. <laughs> Ready? Nan Yue Gu Jin. I'm sorry, one more time. Nan Yue Gu Cha Jin Xiang. The Chinese goes like this. Now, this, the, uh, hmm, Nigga, uh, Han Yu Pinyin Zai, Han Zi, the Shang Bian Zai, her. We have the, the opinion above the characters in this version. So, uh, those who want to read the characters, look at the line below, right here. 人字人字碎八月碎树浮蒲塘素西所事之家门者然以此推之公或素事生中 OK, we're following here, here's the Chinese 主话难月教诸众生 贤令发心精进勇猛求无上道 All right that's the Chinese Shifu's poem that he wrote. It goes like this. Nan yue heng shan miao gao feng Li dai xiang chuan chu sheng sheng San sheng shi ban shui shi shui Wan jie sheng zhong qin fu qin Okay, um, I want to point out some points here. I'm going to indicate some points about the, the verse. So, nan, those, for folks who don't speak Chinese, this is for you. Uh, let's look at the, the uh, title. Xuan Hua, that's Shufu's name. Xuan, you can see the this pronunciation. Qi, verse, yue says, nan yue. What about this nan? That's the same word that we, when we say namo, like namo omitofo, or Namo Guanyin Pusa, that's the Nan. It originally means south, like the southern direction, but somehow this character got picked for the sound Na Mof that is part of Namo, Namaha. So it's south, but it does double duty as Namo, 
so nan yu uh nan yu yu is a uh, notice the mountain <coughs> here's the character from mountain right here shan it's actually a picture this is one of the pictograms 15 percent of chinese still carries the picture charge on it the other 85 are sound made of sound so it's not the case that all the characters carry pictures this one number four one two three four that one shan that's a mountain look at that on the top of the second character there is a mountain underneath it is words to the left is a dog and to the right is a dog <laughs> or an animal this to the left might be a, a, a feline a cat so cats dogs words mountain what does it mean yeah it's for sound it's a mountain range so nanyue the southern mountains hangshan the mm, surrounding mountains miao in the lotus sutra miao fa lian hua jing that's the word wonderful miao gao tall feng peak south range uh surrounding mountains the peak called wondrous and tall li dai shang chuan chu sheng sheng traditionally passed on brings forth sage sangha notice this character on the last on the left side of the last character it's one stroke two strokes that's human or person or man and this character is sangha sheng chuan the right hand side that looks kind of like a tv set looking at you with the antenna on back the antenna on top uh the rabbit ears right that's a, a sound character so so traditionally has produced sages sangha sage-like sangha so this mountain range what the peak called wonderful tall mountain has brought out a lot of monks in the past san three ah oh, one two three oh you learned that one you'll never forget it three lines in a row kind of like half of a hexagram from the book of changes the yijing three sheng three times born shi ban rock stone companion shui look at that that's the word for the huato all of you chan meditators who are learning chan meditation at drbu this is the character for who who is mindful of the buddha nian fo shi shui who's reciting the buddha's name um some of the famous chan halls of china i've been where they have one chinese character uh, uh, printed on the wall maybe even just painted on the wall and it's who second tone shui who what's that about that's what you ask that's as you are walking or sitting you're looking in you're saying who who's in there who is so worried who is so bored who is in there is trying so hard to get enlightened who's in there debating whether to run away who shui shi knows recognizes shui who recognizes who who's asking oh shui shi shui see the same character repeated hmm this is starting to make sense three times born rock companion who is who do we get that no we'll have to look at the story one okay that's the character the title of city of ten thousand buddhas one for chung one right there ten thousand eons sheng oh there it is same one as above same sheng right there chung amid born so <coughs> born amid ten thousand eons chin fu chin father once again fathers chin chin shui shui this is anybody who has taken refuge with my generation didn't take refuge with master hua so didn't become a guo but is a chin that's your character right there chin father or relative related to in, in the same family chin fu chin once again relative once again relative
So interesting, huh? The reason or, we're not going to do this every week, but I thought this these four lines from Master Hua just have so much that adds to our story by looking at the characters themselves. So this is, you're hearing a Kurawong out in the back. He's sitting there in the tree wanting me to come out and open the bird cafe. You have to wait, sorry. All right, they have a beautiful song. Yeah. So that that's our that's our Chinese character verse in English. Let's see. Look at the picture. What's going on? Here's a father. Actually, it's an uncle in this case. Here is a young boy who is pointing out there's a long line of pilgrims here in the mountains. Beautiful mountain landscape etched here by our artist. There is a monastery in the back here and clouds. So, sojourn into the mountains. And it means in the eighth lunar month of the cyclical year, Renzi, the master, at age 13, joined his uncle on a pilgrimage, visiting temples. He offered incense at all of the famous places of Hangshan and Nanyue Mountain. He bowed to the bodhisattvas in the ancient shrines. As if he were roaming through familiar ground, he was happy wherever he went and was attracted as if seeing relatives whom he had known in the past. Who knows? Perhaps in a previous life, the master had been to Nanyao Mountain, teaching and causing living beings to resolve themselves on vigorously <clears throat> and courageously seeking the unsurpassed way. The verse, now that it's here is yo, but it's got three pronunciations. That character, this one right here, can be yao, can be yu, can be yo, depending on where in China you come from. Nanyao, Southern Peak, Hangshan Mountain, that marvelous towering peak, is where the successive transmission produces sages, sagely monks. The granite friends of the past and present and future, who recognizes them? Within the lives of 10,000 eons, relatives return to relatives. Okay. I think I would translate it a little differently, but we'll take it. Okay. So it was 1852. The Civil War in America was still in the future. Uh, another eight years to go before hostilities broke out. A 13-year-old young man traveled with his uncle on a pilgrimage. And that was... <clears throat> People did that in China a lot. Uh, folks who were vigorous and faithful uh, in their um, Buddhist identity or their Taoist identity would go out to mountains. And it was very much a part of being, uh, it was very much a part of Chinese culture to take a religious pilgrimage. And when, when you got to the remote altar, you would offer incense and selling incense provided a li livelihood to, to the incense sellers. And they went to Hongshan out in the Nanyao mountain range. And in these ancient shrines, they bowed to the bodhisattvas. And for the 13 year old boy, he had a feeling of having been there before. He was familiar to him. It's like, oh yeah. Mm. This is, I feel at home when I'm so comfortable here with the clean air and these, it's as if these ancient, uh, massive, sacred sites just were calling to him. And he had the feeling that he had been, <coughs> excuse me, having trouble with my throat here. Mm. Had the feeling that he'd been there before, that he was seeing relatives. And it's possible that he had been there before in a past life, teaching and causing beings to make a resolve to cultivate the path, the way. So, um, sacred sites, 
have that function of pulling us back. Um, what are we building these days that will be, still be here to mm, humble and inspire our children and grandchildren and their grandchildren? Because the, the thing about these sacred sites um, is they, um, they're built to last. What are we talking about? We are talking about Hunan. Okay, right here. If you look at the screen, there's a map of China. Here is Hunan province. It's in the center, central China. Beijing is way up here. Here, let's take a look here. Here is, there's Nanjing. Beijing is way up north. way up north. Here is Beijing, way up here. Okay, Master Hua's uh, Dongbei is up here, even further north. It's called the northeast of China, up near Korea and Russia. That's Dongbei. So here is Hunan. Now you can see where it is. Okay, we're going to zoom in. Uh, so people know Shanghai, right? Shanghai way down here. Hangzhou is down here. Uh, just for, here, let's go smaller here. Okay, here's Taiwan. Here is Fujian. Here is Shanghai and Hangzhou. Hunan. go smaller here. Okay. Um, we're going to go here. Who builds things like this anymore? <laughs> this is indeed where Master Empty Cloud walked as a young man, 13 years old, with his uncle looking up at the mountain and seeing a pagoda, a pavilion like that. Ah, look at this architecture. Hmm, what are we building now? Hmm, parking lots, freeways. <laughs> Here is a Taoist temple, Qinghe Temple, the temple of purity and harmony. So inspiring to travel and lose your sense of importance, to realize that one human life is a blink of an eye. This, these massive constructions that are a thousand years old, built perhaps in the Tang, maybe burned down dozens of times. And when you look from here, from the mountains, looking down to the valleys, you just, you feel like my mind can encompass so much. Uh, here's what humanity and civilization has done. We've got a video screen, a kiosk. <laughs> it just looks like a defilement in front of this beautiful granite architecture that pulls us back, maybe from lifetimes. Hmm. The power of mountains. Yeah. So this is where he walked. This is where our young man toured and traveled. Splendid. Okay. Yes, indeed. Ah, Nan Yue Hongshan. This is, you know, City of 10,000 Buddhas has what we call a mountain gate. That's our uh, icon. And this is a pilo, it's called, and it's also a mountain gate. 
And it says here, Nan Yue Hongshan, this is exactly where. So Master Empty Cloud walked under these, these arches. Yeah, how wonderful to acknowledge the power of mountains and sacred sites to change our perspective, <coughs> to put us uh, into the right size. Um, in the daily turning, things can seem so important just blotting out all other rational thought. We can get so emotionally involved in issues and relationships and things that people did and said. Looking out at a view like this one we suddenly realize, you know, these mountains have been here a long time. Uh, my problems are not that important. Everybody has issues. There's got to be a way to solve that without blowing up, without doing violence, doing damage to myself or to <laughs> the other person. Water washes right through rock. How much the more can I let go of my problems? There will be a solution. I just have to take the next step, keep going. Yeah. Hongshan Scenic Area. Truly, truly, that's the value of the worldly value of sacred sites, the in our story, this visit helped to inspire our young man to make the Bodhi resolve, to decide that he wanted to do more than simply accept what came down the road in his life, which we know was two, two wives in the future, right? So let's move ahead, move on here. Fu Ming Xiu Xi Wai Dao Xian Feng San Nian Gong Fu Ci Qi Bao Chu Shi Yi Sui Qing Wai Dao Shu Shi Shu Shi Jiao Qi Zai Jia Lian Tu Na Shu Mian Qi Ri Hou Chu Jia Dan Gong Sheng Ju Zi Fa Yan Bu Yue Yu Si Gai Wai Dao and the verse goes, San Qian Pang Man Cheng Jue Ji, Jiu Liu Guai Dao Xian Xuan Miao. Uh -huh. Which means being ordered by his father to practice other religions. In the third year of the Xianfeng reign period, 1854, the master was 14. His father, hoping to prevent him from leaving the home life, engaged a Taoist sorcerer to tutor him at home in the ways of alchemy, exhalation, and inhalation. From that time on, he was prevented from leaving the home life. However, the master's innate selective dharma eye would not let him be content with this situation. He saw the externalist teaching was inferior to Buddhism's great renunciation, and he wanted no part of it. He thought that Externalist teaching was as effective as scratching an itch through your boot. But the master was sincerely filial and did not disobey his father's commands. He remained tolerant 
and compromised. The verse, 3,000 extraneous doors reveal special skills. 96 other religions display wonderful metaphysics. Who could have guessed that the Master had the selective Dharma vision and so could distinguish clearly right from wrong, improper from correct? <coughs> so, pilgrimage is over, back home. Um, father, noticing the influence of his brother on his son, the father's brother was the uncle who took him on pilgrimage and had the lovely library. So the dad says, no, we don't want him to get too interested. He's got to get married. He's got to carry on the family legacy, make his way in the world. So I'm going to deliberately teach him wrong stuff <laughs> that will <coughs> block his wish to leave home. So, uh, but what happened was Master Empty Cloud had, it was too late. He had already kindled, he'd already lit his wisdom in his heart and in his mind as he was learning the Taoist techniques of yoga and alchemy and such, the five elements and yin and yang, in his mind he was going, no, that doesn't connect, no. That doesn't go as far as I want to go. <coughs> now, externalist teaching with that, that's a translation of Wai Dao, meaning non-Buddhist teachings. Teachings that lead outside the mind. He said, no, this isn't what I'm looking for. I want to follow the Buddha and look to, into the heart of everything. So, he said, "What's uh, what are Wai Dao, what are uh, paths that lead outside like it's like having an itchy toe and you got your boot on and you have to you can't scratch the itch because there's a boot and a sock in the way but being the young man that he was he said how 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 okay he didn't fight but in his mind he knew the score um this translation so, 3,000 side doors um, have their own wonderful stuff. The 96 external paths, paths that lead outside the mind, have their wonders indeed. Who knew that inside our young man had already uh, set his wisdom light? Right and wrong, true and false, revealed themselves on the spot. Here's the picture. <laughs> Great shot. Here's the young man. He's learning what? Learning how to take in one long breath and then expel. He can go take in more than one back throat breathing and then slowly expel the breath in a long exhale. And learning the Book of Changes and all from this Taoist teacher, not a monk. Is a typical Taoist get up here. Incense is burning. And our young man sitting here, not in full lotus, um, who has got his palms together and he's melting the cinnabar inside. Lian Dan. Um, different kinds of meditation techniques, which are not wrong. They're not complete. When you're when you're a master of these meditation techniques, mostly they teach you to hang on to your body. They teach you uh, immortality. That's the idea. And so, not that they're incorrect or wrong, it's that you don't get liberation from birth and death. So, it's, Master Hua would say that the teachings of Taoism, which he learned and mastered, mind you, he said, it's kind of like high school. You learn a lot, you have to go through, but there's more. You have to go on to higher education, and that's Buddhism. So, interesting, right? And what else? Two other stories here. One is, 
the dad doesn't want him to leave home and knows he could. Um, the problem is, if he leaves home, that's he has gone, and the he's no longer an asset to the family until <laughs> it comes time to face the big issues in the family, birth and death, and all the other things that happen to people, and then suddenly, oh, we're so glad we have a monk in the family. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how it comes around. Um, that's one, is dad trying to keep him from leaving home. Number two is the reaction of the boy to this, which is he's already got enough wisdom to know it's important to not rebel to go along with your parents until it's your time to leave. But not at this point. Not, this is not the time to fight back. So he is filial. The text says, Gu quan xuan jiu si. Gong tian sheng chun xiao. In his, his nature was filial, which is to say his sense of gratitude is really important. Fu ming bu wei. He didn't, rebel against his father's instructions. He just learned it, and yet his own innate wisdom said, mm, this doesn't make it. Uh, this is not what I want. <clears throat> so, okay. <laughs> um, me too. Me too. I went through Methodist... Sunday school, I was 14, and <coughs> the classes were taught by parents. Mom and, moms and dads would volunteer to teach the Sunday school. This was a small church in Toledo, Ohio, and they didn't have money to hire uh, education staff. It was only for an hour on Sunday. So, it was really hard for the parents to do more than get the kind of uh, religious publications. Um, and they were mostly picture books. And we were already into puberty. We were interested in boys and girls. We were very interested in looking cool and being accepted by our friends. So our thoughts were elsewhere, and the poor teachers had only these picture books. And when I looked at the picture books and had stories of Jesus, the, it simply couldn't compete. Furthermore, the, the pictures and the stories all came out of the Middle East. There was sand, there were camels, there were <coughs> date bombs, there were uh, people in robes, people with beards, and I looked at it and thought, this is not my tribe. I don't belong here. I don't relate to the time or the place or the culture or the people or the stories. Nothing to do with me. So that was one, was I rejected the cultural context of the stories of Jesus' life, I didn't see the connection. Furthermore, at the same time, I had discovered my local library. Just a 20-minute walk from my house, there was the local public library, a small branch, Sigmund Sanger branch of the Toledo Public Library. And there was a shelf of Asian religions. And I found the Tao Te Ching, and the Tao Te Ching was translated by St. John's University Press. It was published by St. John's University Press. And it was bilingual. There was Chinese on one side, English on the other. And the front piece, when you open the book, the inside cover, and then the, the right-hand page, was a Chinese landscape. It was um, <coughs> very similar to to this kind of thing. Yeah, and it was a sepia tone. And I would look at that landscape and feel at home. 
and then I would touch the Dao De Jing, and it would say, Dao Ke Dao, Fei Chang Dao, Ming Ke Ming, Fei Chang Ming. The Dao that you can talk about, that's not the real one. The names that you can name, those aren't the real names. Uh, and Yo Ming Tian Di Zhi Shi, Wu Ming, Wan Mu, Zhi Mu. As soon as you name it, uh, whatever, when you get the right name, it's the progenitor. It precedes heaven and earth. Nameless, it is the mother of all 10,000 things. And my heart went, yes, that's where I belong. That's what I want. And, oh my, when I would go into Sunday school and they would tell us, show us a picture of Jesus who looked like a California surfer dude with long hair and a long beard and long robes. And, and it just was like, I don't. Nope. No connection. Reading the Tao Te Ching, ah, oh, my heart just took wing. And I asked the poor Sunday school teacher, Mr. Ali, what, what does it mean to say uh, it is the spirit of the feminine? Its strength comes from what is missing, and it is the source of all 10,000 things, the spirit of the valley. You, The more you use it, it's inexhaustible the more there is and he would say you can't ask that question here and I said I have to go or I can ask that question bye and I left and luckily our enlightened Methodist minister Paul Trope said son I know we can't keep your mind here you can go with my blessings he said and he let me go. He didn't curse me or send me to hell. So, oh man, I, <coughs> when I, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, when I hear these stories of Master Empty Cloud, it's like, yes, yes, I completely recognize the power of good books to influence the mind and the power of sacred sites. Go out to a place where your mind expands. Now, um, I have to say that if my father had been alive uh, when I decided I was going to leave home, I think he would have prevented me from doing that, probably. But he had already passed away. He did, my dad indeed did allow me uh, in my uh, third summer of college to go to Taiwan to study to study Chinese. He thought that was broadening. He, and he himself had already been to Europe in the war, traveled the world. Uh, so he had a broad mind, but to leave home, similar to our young master Xiao, his father didn't want to lose his son to the Sangha. So his strategy was to hire a Taoist <laughs> to lead him astray uh, and satisfy him. But the wisdom, seeds of wisdom in young Master Empty Cloud's heart had already sprouted. Too late. Too late. We'll find out next week what, uh, what happened. All right. I wonder how many of us can uh, relate to this story. <laughs> um, I saw in the news today that uh, California Senator Dianne Feinstein passed away at age 90. I wanted to share a photo. Here is future mayor of San Francisco, Dianne Feinstein at Gold Mountain Monastery in front of Guanyin Bodhisattva. I'm taking the photo and this is my office up over her left shoulder. Uh, you see her uh, escort down here at the front door. This is Gold Mountain and this was uh, 19... 70, 
four. And she's running for mayor. Uh, George Moscone won. Uh, she came back after Moscone was uh, assassinated, was killed. But uh, she was one of the, the line of candidates whom Master Hua invited into Gold Mountain to give their campaign speeches. Gold Mountain Monastery was a campaign stop. And uh, Mayor Moscone said that we were one of the best audiences he had, <laughs> he had had. Uh, we were the most attentive, and I thought it was funny because the monks and nuns were uh, huddled in blankets and cold. And so, uh, so San Francisco culture, uh, Master Hua in, involved us in every aspect of it. He wanted the Dharma to take part to help influence people. So here was future Senator Feinstein at Gold Mountain with Guan Yin Bodhisattva behind her. And the uh, senior senator passed away yesterday in Washington uh, at age 90. So we indeed have, uh, following Master Hua, following his example, to bring the Dharma into people's lives, make it available to them. She, uh, kudos to, to future mayor, future Senator Feinstein uh, for that gracious smile as she was meeting the Buddhists in San Francisco in the 70s. Indeed. Historic photo. Okay. Now, um, by sharing the Chinese uh, on the verse here, that's the first time we've done that as we look at these uh, stories. And I won't do that much. I know there's people who are not particularly interested in the Chinese. Um, maybe we could ask, if put, put a comment in the chat if you would like more Chinese language analysis of these verses. Um, if you just say yes, more Chinese, or no thanks, that was enough. Sometimes, uh, Shifu's verses are, to my mind, magical. They're, he's just a master at uh, using characters to, to teach. Uh, he did this with couplets, he did it with poetry and verses. So leave a note there if you would like more character-by-character uh, -character analysis. Because for me, the characters are magical. They, they were my door into the Dharma, clearly. Uh, so I have a deep respect and continuing uh, relationship. I, I'm learning Chinese every day, and I've been studying Chinese for 50 years. So, uh, I love to do it, but I, I don't want people to feel like, hmm, we didn't come for a Chinese lesson. We came to be inspired by the Dharma. Okay, uh, more Chinese. I'm getting some, po yes, please, yes, please. Okay, all right. Well, that's pretty positive. Yeah. All right, no worries. As they say, no worries. Yeah, great. Okay, we'll do. Uh, now, just because you probably won't get this anywhere else, and because we are a full service Dharma lecturing team here, you need to take a look at how kangaroos. Here they come.
right? So tell me which other Dharma lecture gives you images of hopping kangaroos. Mm-hmm. All right. Sure, unbow, right? Okay. So time to dedicate merit and. Share some of the goodness with the world. Make this a little smaller here. Okay, we can dedicate merit to Senator Feinstein. Join first bow, second bow, and third bow. Bow in respect to the Venerable Master, first bow, second bow, and third bow. All right, everybody. Thank you all for joining. Glad you are here today. Looking forward to next week and continuing in our investigation of Master Empty Cloud. All right, be well. Amitofo. Bye now. <laughs>